Hi everyone, I'm Lorenz and in this video I'm going to talk about the two driver games on the GBA. Driver to Advance is one of the GBA's technical marvels. It's astonishing just how much Driver to Advance looks, feels and plays like the PlayStation version of Driver 2. Not only that it's graphically epic, but it also features two large cities and a good deal of missions. Some complain that it doesn't manage to copy the sense of speed of the original Driver game. Others complained that the pacing of the missions isn't so good. Others that the project was too ambitious and the result isn't an exact copy. Well, the game isn't an exact copy, of course, because the GBA isn't as capable as a PlayStation. But still, it's close enough. And for me, it's not a good game because, yeah, it's good for the hardware because the GBA isn't that capable. For me, it's a good game, period. No comparison with the original game needed. For me, the driver games on the GBA are good games even as standalone games, without having to compare them to the original source material. But those who compare it with the bigger version, of course they are disappointed. You can't cram a full PlayStation game onto a GBA. I mean, sure, there are only two of the three cities in the origin from the original game. And it's not an exact copy. But in the end, if you think of the game like this, you're priving yourself of the fun. Because you compare a good game to something superior. So, the GBA version of Driver has 30 missions, and most are identical to the original PlayStation game. There are around 10 vehicles that get repeated in the game, but at least those 10 get a good deal of variety with different stats. You get vans, police cars, muscle cars and sedans. The game also has the same minigames as the PlayStation game, I mean you get Quick Chase, Getaway, Checkpoint and Survival, as well as Trailblazer challenges, where you have to knock over cones. You also get Checkpoint and Crosstown race modes, which let you and four friends race one another to the finish line, while the Free For All and Cops and Robbers mode let you play a survival match solo or in teams. And Driver 3 offers a new story and some improvements in gameplay and graphics, but mostly just graphics. First off, the devs managed to add more variety to buildings. Now the city isn't a grey mush. There are different color buildings and more architecture types. Also now the road isn't only flat, the graphics engine supports hills now. There are more cars in the game and cars have a better sense of speed, but because of this ambition, the game suffers from time to time, the frame rate dips, no matter if you play it on emulator or on the original GBA. On the emulator of course the performance is better, but on the original GBA it has some occasional moments where the frame rate just drops. The draw distance is still poor, which means that one split second when you're not careful and you get your target out of sight. And this will happen fairly often, since the collision system is very dodgy, I mean it's a lottery if you hit something or not, and the collision system is also like bumper cars, which is really annoying in some missions, like the one in the video now, because it pushes you back when you hit something. But even if it tries to improve the graphics, the game loses something important, the minigames. Remember how the other one had extra game modes and plenty of them? Well, this one doesn't just has the story and that's that. And in my eyes it makes it lose a lot of points, since after finishing the missions it was always fun to play and replay some of the game modes. But for its defense, just like the other one, this one too is a long game. It takes several hours to finish, making, making it one of the longer GBA games. Also another good side is that the story missions are more varied. Now you have even missions that get you out of your vehicle for some on-foot action, the other one didn't have those. Also another weird detail about Driver 3 is that the game engine warps a lot, maybe that's how they managed to make up for the sense of speed. Anyway, it's always weird throughout the game. It doesn't break the game, but there are some places where it's super obvious that the game warps, even more obvious than usual I mean. So overall Driver 3 is a give and take. If you like the advantages more, then it's a battle game. But if you don't like that the game lacks game modes and that the frame rate dips, then it's not a better game than Driver 2.
but anyway you put it, the two driver games are must-haves on the GBA. Not only that they are technical marvels, but are also enjoyable to play, both of them. The devs managed to cram a PlayStation game, downscale it and port it onto a tiny GBA cartridge. Two times. And they did an outstanding job. Even if the handling can feel approximate, collision is kind of a lottery, and the scenery can pop in and out, still I consider the games incredible. And you must have them, or at least try them on your GBA.